Hello and welcome to the MCSD Public Education Awareness Report. I'm your host, Kimberly Wright, and we have an exciting show in store for you today. Whether you're a parent or a teacher or a student or simply someone who cares about the future of our community, you're in for a treat. You may have heard of the new K-2 initiative that has been implemented by our superintendent and voted on by the Muskogee County School Board in February. Today, our special guest is Ms. Caprice Bentley Brown. She will serve as the new principal of the K-2 initiative. And we also have with us today, Ms. Felicia Thompson, the new MLK principal. These schools will also be impacted by the new initiative. So stay tuned, we have a great show today and we'll be right back after these messages. Some say e-cigarettes aren't dangerous. But science shows nicotine can harm teens' developing brains. No matter how they're exposed. Let's do an experiment to find out. Here's a teen who won't be using e-cigarettes. Now we need one willing to risk their brain development. Anyone care to volunteer your kid? Anyone? I'm Dr. Vivek Murthy, U.S. Surgeon General. Your kids are not an experiment. Protect them from e-cigarettes. WIC is the Women, Infant, and Children's program that provides nutrition education, vouchers for healthy food, and even health screenings for your child. Qualifying for WIC for your children under five is based on your income and family size. To see if you're eligible, call today. Welcome back. We're excited about the new MCSD K2 initiative, and we're talking to the principal Ms. Caprice Brentley Brown and Ms. Felicia Thompson, the new principal at MLK, about the new initiative. Welcome, ladies. Hello. Hello. Thank Hello. you for having us. How are you today? Doing very well. Right. Just trying to get through testing right now. That's right. We have GMAS <laughs> this week. Absolutely. So introduce yourself so everybody will know which is which. Ms. Caprice Bentley Brown. So I'm Ms. Bentley Brown. I'm currently the principal of Martin Luther King Elementary School and I will be transitioning to the K-2 school at the beginning of next school year. Awesome. And I am Felicia Thompson, currently the principal at Allen Elementary, and we'll be transitioning to MLK at the beginning of next year. Great, so let's get into the new K-2 initiative. Tell us a little bit about why the K-2 initiative came about and how do you feel like it's gonna impact our community? Um, I would say that based on the data from the schools in the 31903 zip code, mm -hmm. um, that was MLK, Dorothy Height, Jody Davis, and Brewer. Um, just historically, we have had um, issues with our just student achievement in general. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, that um, Dr. Lewis just had this bold vision mm -hmm. and he was thinking of what could he do? Um, so he just, he came up with the idea, uh, of course he collaborated with others, but it is his initiative and he wants to ensure that the students in the 31903 area have an opportunity to be successful and to um, be able to just learn those foundational skills so that they can be successful. So I, I understand you've been talking to the community, there has been some community forums and What's the outcome of those uh, community forums? Have you been receiving positive feedback? Have you been receiving bad feedback? Like what's the feedback from parents and what's the feedback from the community? I think just basically they just want to have the opportunity to ask more questions, mm -hmm. to get clarification because it is so new and they want to know exactly how much the children will be impacted since it's such a big change. Mm -hmm. So as far as buses, transportation, like what are the changes going to be made for the parents and what do they need to do to get their students to school if they qualify for this, uh, this new program? Well, the first thing would be to register, <laughs> to do the <laughs> online registration. registration. Right. That's the biggest thing. Um, mm -hmm. And so once they do online registration and they request transportation, um, there has been, the district has created uh, a way so that the students it won't be a hardship on the families, I would mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. So the transportation department has worked very closely with um, the administrators at the schools just mm -hmm. to kind of get ideas and mm -hmm. get feedback from the parents. But I know that they have um, already kind of ironed out what would happen if a family is going to be at two different, if a, if a parent would have a student at two different schools. Mm -hmm. So they would ride the same transportation to school and from school. So that would eliminate that transportation hardship. 
Okay. Um, so that was a big concern that we knew, like on the front end, that that would be a, an issue. So they handled that very quickly. Mm -hmm. So that was already kind of ironed out. So that was so great. siblings wouldn't be separated. That was the big thing because you have older siblings that kind of watch over the younger siblings as they're transitioning to and forth, and so. So I did get a question from someone that I knew in the community. So this is not going to be like the gifted program where kids just going to be pulled out of your school just to come to the K-2 school for a little while to learn or whatever. Mm -hmm. This is actually a school that they will be attending in the fall for the whole school semester. This is not like a temporary thing. Like, you know how some of the gifted students are pulled out of their schools to go to the gifted mm -hmm. program. This is a really full functioning school. Yes, they qualify by looking at their achievement data. Mm -hmm. And so based on their data is whether they determine whether or not they'll be attending school at the- And have work. the schools, have these students been selected yet or is it still an ongoing process? They're in the selection process now. Uh, we just finished testing last week. So they're using the final data just to look at um, trends over time to determine which kids would be the most beneficial kids to go over. Um, I would say like the uh, Brewer K-2 school would be like an annex. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how Mr. Bell has been talking about it. Um, like we're an extension of each of those three schools. Mm -hmm. So we're like a hub, but the students would have a home school and whatever their home school is, um, we, if they qualify, then they would go or be assigned mm -hmm. um, to go to the K-2 school. Got it. And it's, not a gifted program, but we're, our goal is to accelerate the students. It's mm -hmm. like meeting you where you are mm -hmm. and then making Absolutely. sure that we accelerate you to be able to be on grade level. And you said this, this school is like a hub of three surrounding schools. Can you tell me those three schools again? Yeah, so that will be MLK Elementary, mm -hmm. Dorothy Height, mm -hmm. and J.D. Davis Elementary. Okay. And okay. also, I mean, Brewer is a part of it, mm -hmm. but the Brewer, the school itself has been, I would say, dissolved. Mm -hmm. And so the students at Brewer now have a different home zone, home school. Mm -hmm. And it will be between um, all of their ESOL students would go to MLK. Okay. Um, because out of the four schools, MLK and Brewer were the two original schools for the ESOL students. Okay. And then you have J.D. Davis would get some and Dorothy Height would get, okay, depending great. on their locations. Mm -hmm. So okay. we benefit, I would benefit at MLK by having students um, ending their second grade um, year coming on grade level and ready to deal with a very robust third grade curriculum. Okay, this mm -hmm. is, I think this is a very important program for our students. Mm -hmm. What, what do you hope the outcome would be? What's the, the, the main goal for the students for this K-2 initiative? The goal would be that they are um, definitely closer to being reading on grade level mm -hmm. um, as possible or above. And it will also be an opportunity for the kids to learn those foundational skills while learning the grade level content. Mm -hmm. And then also just like building their self-esteem and mm -hmm. their confidence and teaching mm -hmm. them executive functioning skills so that they could be like independent critical thinkers and problem solvers. Mm -hmm. Um, and we know that all students learn at different levels right. and different times. Mm -hmm. um, they just need to be in the right environment at the right time with mm -hmm. the right people. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about the K-2 initiative because the teachers that will be working there, mm -hmm. they wanted to apply to be there. Like they're up for the challenge. They understand that we'll have some extra planning sessions and mm -hmm. we may have some Saturday sessions for parents and just they understand um, the amount of work that it would take mm -hmm. to have a functioning, like effective school when you're combining students from different areas mm -hmm. and they're all coming together. But they want to do it, they're excited about it. Um, they could start tomorrow. If yeah. honestly, if we could, they would probably be ready for tomorrow ready for because tomorrow. they're like awesome. reaching out and excited about it mm -hmm. and just want to know what is it that they need to do to prepare. Mm -hmm. So that's the really exciting thing and to have teachers that are passionate about what they do. And we have a lot of passionate teachers. Yes. Um, this is a new initiative, so it's gonna definitely take a little more dedication right. and collaboration. Mm -hmm and um, community involvement, mm -hmm. actually. 
and making sure that we support not just the kids, but the families. And Absolutely. if we could, uh, I guess, prepare the students, we're helping their families to also help the community. And is I just see like in year 10, at least five to 10 years from now, we should see a difference. And we should see okay. the kids going to Eddie and Baker mm -hmm. Middle Schools mm -hmm. more prepared and on grade levels so then they can feed into Carver and Spencer mm -hmm. and just to see the community flourish because we know um, education is the key. It is. To anything, it doesn't matter where you are. Mm -hmm. And just to like foresee the difference mm -hmm. and the impact that it will make is exciting I, for me. I love the concept of meeting students where they are. I really do love that and that is the truth and I'm grateful that we do have passionate teachers and they're ready to go to help these students and not just the students but also the families and the community. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you would like the community to know about this initiative? I would want the community to embrace it um, and not to make any students feel like I am not smart enough or I'm mm -hmm. not good enough or to embrace that everybody learns differently and everybody needs to, to know that we are willing to create the environment in which they need to be successful. It's almost like a, a private school that you'll have a 14 to one ratio of students to teachers because in a general kindergarten classroom, you have 25. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And that to know that a teacher can, if a teacher could work magic and really move students in a, in a classroom of 25, just imagine what they could do for the 14 students, a smaller class size, you're doing a little more intensive support, mm -hmm. but you have the right resources. Um, in the K2 initiative, we're really focusing on understanding the brain and how the brain works and Absolutely. how students learn. That's wonderful. And so like the science of reading and just making sure the teachers know it's not the resources that we give you is your understanding of best practices and mm -hmm. how you teach, what good teachers do. Um, it's just really exciting to know. It is like, exciting and I'm excited happen. about it too. Oh, absolutely, because all of that is happening at Brewer, but it's extending to the other schools. That's so right. a lot of those resources that they will have, we will have access to. And I'm just excited to know that I'm going to have a bigger, brighter student yes. <laughs> to, to teach. We know it's going to be take some time. And like Ms. Bentley Brown said, we do need the patience of parents yes. um, because this area traditionally has struggled with um, achieving on uh, state test or just achieving in general. And so I'm just so proud of our superintendent who mm -hmm. had the forethought of thinking, what else can we do? do to help our students. Yes, That's right. and so I'm really pleased and happy to be part of the process. Well, I thank you both for joining us today and giving us a little bit more insight to the K2 initiative. Again, I know there has been community forums going on, but it doesn't help to give the parents in the community a little bit more information yeah. about the K2 initiative. So thank you both again for coming. That concludes our show for today. I want to thank my special guests again for coming on and thank you for tuning in to get the latest news and updates from our beloved Muskogee County School District. See you next time. 